What's up guys? Tomorrow is Missouri rifle season, opening day. I'm headed to deer camp right now to catch up with my buddies. Then I'm gonna go to dad's tonight. We're gonna get after them all. It's gonna be fun. Is it good? Great. It's good eating, huh? Wow. I'm fixing to get me some. There. Thanks, Jay Bird. No problem, buddy. Looking good. That's all right. I'm just grabbing handfuls. Well, it's opening morning of gun season here in Missouri. As you can tell, we're running a little late this morning. It was storming at 5 a.m. when Dad and I woke up, so we decided to just sleep in for a few hours and then get out here about 7.30, 8 o'clock. We're going to go back here on the farm behind me. The old man looks like he's ready to go. Yes, sir, we're ready to go. What? You, uh, you gonna tuck your pants in? Checking out the variety of my gear. <laughs> you got your bullets? Got bullets. Let's go. And I'm horse, but I do not have COVID. I've been tested. All right, well, that's good. What do you want to do? Go around to the bottom and walk up? Walk her up. Walk into that old 20 mile an hour wind. Oops, is that a turkey in the road? It is. That's Big old a gobbler up there. Turkey in the road. Big old yeah. gobbler up there in the road. Wait, one, three. Takes more than that, it's not a good shot. So you're right. See if old Blue Jean King can put a buck down this morning. Killed my first deer out of that stand. Yeah. And your second. And my third, maybe. Yeah, I think you did, matter of fact. When did we build that, that stand? We built that stand when you wasn't too much help. <laughs> <laughs> Over 25 years, hasn't it? Yeah, you're getting pretty old. Yeah, no kidding. Got our old camera stand up there, right there. <laughs> it's grown in the tree at this point. Yeah, we gotta get that thing cut out. Three days later. What's up guys? I went with my old man this weekend. We didn't see any deer, but we had a good time and I also got a chance to go to deer camp with a bunch of my buddies. But I went to dad's and I grabbed my grandpa's old 3030. This is the gun that I hunted with when I was a kid. It's actually the gun I killed my first deer with. And when I think about it, I don't I think it's the only rifle I've ever killed a deer with for that matter. I've went to a couple of different parking areas on public already today and seen a pile of trucks. If you have hunted Missouri rifle season before, you know that it is extremely busy on public land. I've never hunted this particular area before, so I'm just going to cover a bunch of ground until I either find deer or find fresh sign and set up over it. Well, that's definitely some dude rattling over there. <sighs> Dang it, probably try to move, try to get further away from him somewhere here. Found the rattle maker. He's got him a nice orange flag up down there. set up and I'm overlooking this little saddle in front of me. Just cedar thicket to my left. I guess my hope is is that Bucks will use this saddle to cruise. There's a river down in here below me and a pretty steep bluff back behind me. There's kind of one spot at the head of this ridge where that bluff sort of peters out down here in this saddle where Bucks can cruise back and forth. They can cross the river and then come across the tip of this ridge and down and into these cedars. Probably a spot where I ain't gonna see a lot of deer but might see a big buck coming through there at some point. Could get wild this morning. I've already heard a few shots going off in the distance. The Orange Army is at it again, boys and girls.
little spike and the young eight pointer walked right here to my left. They eventually got downwind to me and smelled me and bounded over that ridge. And there was another young buck that was further down the ridge, but it looked like he went over to the east of me. I hadn't seen a deer for About 11.15, this may do it for my morning. I was hoping to sit in here until a little bit after 12, but I just looked at the radar and there's quite a bit of heavy rain coming in from the southwest here. About 15 minutes ago, I saw a nice buck come through about 150 yards out down this ridge. And last I saw him, he turned and he was walking to the right down in the bottom of that saddle there. Real close though, I mean, if he would've come up here where those younger bucks were at earlier this morning we'd have been in business this big wood stuff like this is tough you gotta have a lot of patience just sitting in a saddle right here with a couple of faint trails that run up and over top of it it's not the most action-packed way of hunting them for sure but it's definitely effective on deer just gotta get the right one to do the right thing and you know, walk in front of me in this old 30 30 Guys, I just want to show you all my setup right here real quick. You can see that I'm tucked up in this cedar tree right here with a bunch of these horizontal limbs coming off of it. And this cedar tree's got a few trunks shooting out of the base here. So the tree is actually wider than my shoulders. And as you can see, I've got this camera rig and my backpack over there, GoPros hanging up in it and all this stuff. So I need to have a lot of back cover and a lot of good horizontal cover. These, these trees like this are perfect for this type of a ground setup. I think I can actually see further in here from the ground than I would be able to if I was in a tree, just because it's all cedars. Once you get up in the canopy of these cedars, they start to block stuff out for you at ground level. That's usually not the case. Usually you're better off in a tree as far as visibility goes, but didn't make it happen, but it's a good morning. Sat here for a while kind of boring doing this just staring at squirrels most of the day but it does work if you've got the patience and the time to just sit up in spots like this especially if you're hunting big woods you sit on top of these saddles and eventually during the rut something's going to come walking through there back after it again this morning missouri gun season set up at the same spot that i was at the other day where i saw those four bucks those three little bucks came right by me right here and then I saw the bigger buck around 11 o'clock down in there. So, got the same wind today, a north wind, although it's not hardly doing anything right now. I'm probably gonna drop the hammer on this 30-30 on the first legal buck that comes through here today. Only have one more day after today of firearm season. And I don't even know if I'm gonna get to hunt tomorrow, so. Hopefully it works out. Ooh, somebody just got him one. Maybe getting ran around. 
Second one of the dough. Another dough. just came by on that doe's trail from earlier and he went, just w went over the ridge out of sight. He was probably 100 yards or so. So I need to get over here to the crest of that ridge where I can shoot down in there at that doe's trail. Come in here. I mean, I couldn't have sat down any sooner. I just got my tripod set up here with the camera and looked up and I could see deer coming straight out of the cedars in front of me. The only reason why I cocked the hammer back on him when I had him right here is because I didn't know if he was a legal buck or not. They have to have four points on one side. 
had so many deer around me that I couldn't pull up my binoculars to see if the dead gun thing was legal. So he literally had to get up here to like 20 yards before I could tell that he had little short inch and a half long brow tines. I think I'm in a good spot now though. Pile of does in here. More deer coming on top of this ridge over here. To my left. Well guys, I've been sitting here for about seven hours. It's almost one o'clock right now. I just checked the radar. And looks like we're gonna have rain come in in the next 30 minutes. It's gonna it's supposed to get pretty heavy too, so I'm fixing to pack up my gear and get the heck out of here. But this is exactly what Warren Womack is talking about when he's talking about feed trees. We had this same situation in Tennessee and it concentrated all the deer. And I just kind of stumbled into this one. We got these cedars on top of this ridge. It's a good bedding ridge. In fact, I just had a little buck come in and bed down about 60 yards from me up in those cedars. And right off the side of these cedars, on, I guess it's the east side of this little saddle that I'm hunting, is this grove of black oaks. And there's seven, eight black oaks in here. At least that's what I think they are. I could be wrong. But I looked up in the tops of them and they are full of acorns still. And it's almost Thanksgiving. <laughs> the interesting thing with this morning's hunt though was that we had a good hard frost on before daylight. It dropped down like 26 last night. And then about 8, 30, 9 o'clock when the sun got up, started melting that frost. I guess when that moisture started dropping out of the trees, these things just started raining acorns. I mean, you can hear the audio when those deer are in here feeding around them. There's acorns just falling everywhere. And now you can't hardly hear them falling at all. Which is interesting. I mean, that frost melting off is what dropped a bunch of those acorns. And as soon as that happened, a bunch of these deer up in this bedding area poured out of it and came right here. I've probably seen 15 to 20 different deer in this spot in two days of hunting. And every single one of them has wound up in this 30 by 40 square right here underneath all these black oak trees. And this is a situation where we're hunting big woods. There's oaks literally everywhere. I mean, I'll walk through a mile of white oaks to get back in here. Right now, these black oaks are the ticket along the edge of a bedding area like this. And if you're hunting in big woods scenarios, that's, that's a common question we get all the time is like, where the heck do you hunt? Because the deer just meander around. They can literally feed anywhere because there's acorns everywhere. Well, in this situation, there is acorns everywhere. But these are the ones that are freshest. They're the ones that are falling today. And they're also the ones that are right next to the bedding area. There you go, Warren. You're right again, my friend. I'd say he's the right guy that's killed like 500 deer on public land with a bow and arrow. Probably knows what the heck's going on. That's a good podcast. I'll post a link to it down in the description below if you guys want to listen to it. I'm going to get all my gear packed up. Head out of here. No luck in rifle season, but it's been fun.